Hi, I'd like to introduce myself and welcome you to Southern Liberal Trans Woman Speaks. This is Jamie Gendron, and I'm going to be coming to you once a week with a live video blog on here on YouTube so that we can get to know one another. Hopefully I can meet some new friends and we can talk about some very interesting things. I think that it's important that our community reaches out to one another, especially during these times, in order to better achieve community unity. We need it. We're going to need it, especially with the upcoming administration that's about to take over. So, let me tell you a little bit about myself. As I said, this series is called Southern, Southern Liberal Trans Woman Speak. I chose that name because it's a perfect description of me. I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I grew up a lot between New Orleans and Houston, Texas. I am Southern to the core. I now live in California. When I was a young child, my parents divorced when I was a year old. And when my mother remarried, my stepfather, when I was five years old, began raping me. He would wait for my mother to leave for work, and he would strip me, <clears throat> and he would lay me on the floor at their bed, at the foot of their bed, and he would handcuff me with real handcuffs to the foot of the bed, and I would be left there for hours. And he would come and rape me at will whenever he felt like it. I put up with that for two years. I never said a word because when a crazy man has at least a dozen guns in the house and you know it, even if you're five years old, and they tell you that if you ever say a word to anyone that they're going to kill you, your mother, your sisters, everyone. You believe them. I never spoke a word out loud about my stepfather's abuse until I was 31 years old. So that tells you how deep those scars run. This same man kidnapped my sisters and I at one point. My mother had tried to leave him. He found us. He kidnapped us. He beat my mother, took me and my sisters, and he put a pistol in my mouth and told me he was going to kill me if my mother didn't take him back because I wasn't his biological child. Well, he took the gun back out of my mouth and instead he shot himself in the chest. And so, at that age, it was up to me to call for help. And he was calling my name from the floor, begging for help. I could have let him bleed to death for everything he did to me. It's not like he wouldn't have deserved it. But I saved his life only for him to terrorize me several more times throughout life. The man became the Michael Myers boogeyman of my life that never dies and never fully goes away and always pops back up when you least expect him. So that being said, let's talk about when I got a little bit older. When I hit puberty, I had already been beaten by my mother and every man she had been with except for my biological father. He was the only one that brought any normalcy or any sanity in my life whatsoever as a small child. Him and my, that side of my family. I even lived with my dad's mother for a few years 
And I can honestly say that those are the only years that I know what a normal childhood was supposed to feel like. Those were the years that I knew what a mother's love was supposed to feel like. She passed away last January, five days before her 99th birthday. She lived a full long life and she meant a whole lot to me and I miss her a lot. So, as I was saying, when I hit puberty, it was the wrong puberty, obviously, which made the normal teenage crazy. And <clears throat> it went to another level with me. I went out of my mind and became a very, very, very vicious, conniving, cunning, cold person that I didn't even recognize anymore. And my mother took me back. I went to Houston with her and it lasted about four or five months. And then she found out one day her boyfriend saw me at the Galleria Mall in Houston, Texas with makeup on, girls clothes, and I was holding hands and kissing a boy by the water fountains. It was an innocent high school boyfriend to me. But when I got home, My mother told me I'm not going to have some faggot son of mine parading around town dressed like a girl. You're not going to embarrass me and be a freak. So if you think you know what you're doing and you think you know better, there's the goddamn door. Walk out and never fucking walk through it again. So I did. I left. And... By happenstance, I was after hours clubbing with some friends and I had on a full face of makeup and I had on girls clothes, but I hung out in punk rock and techno clubs and new wave bars back then. So I just called it new wave, you know, to get over, to be able, as an excuse, really. We went into a club after hours called the Booby Rock. And the Booby Rock had a big sign out front that said Triple X Live Transsexual Strippers. Yeah. That bar changed my life forever. I walked in and suddenly I knew where I belonged. I knew who I was. I always knew who I was. But then I knew it was possible. So I went to the ladies room to touch up my makeup and I hear a husky Spanish accented voice coming through the stall but I could tell a feminine voice husky but feminine saying hello she came out of the stall and she was a thick built Mexican girl but very pretty, very Indian features. And her name was Angel. Angel had left home at 11 years old for the same reason, because she had to be a girl. 11 years old, her mother threw her out into the streets. Angel asked me my name in that bathroom. I said, James. She said, no, what's your drag name? I said, I'm not in drag. She said, oh, honey, trust me, you're in drag. And you're going to go a lot further than that with it, I can tell. So why don't you keep it simple? And if your name is James, go with Jamie. It'll be easier in the long run for your family and friends to get used to. So I did. And she named me. And she taught me how to hustle the streets to eat. 
She showed me where the hotels were that didn't ask for ID for the underage kids from the streets so that I could rent rooms and have a roof over my head. I slept with men old enough to be my grandfather for not as much money as you would think. Just to pay for a cheap hooker hotel room and some food and keep myself clothed. That's how I survived my teenage years, in and out of jail, constantly in trouble with the law for prostitution, constantly hounded and harassed by the police just for being transgender. It wasn't fun. It was no picnic, let me tell you. It was very, very hard times because in those days, 30 years ago, People were allowed to openly hate us. It was perfectly socially acceptable for people to openly hate us. I fear that that time might be coming again. I hope not, but a lot of us better brace ourselves. So ending up in the child sex industry led to me staying into it into my adult years. Because after being a child prostitute, I convinced myself that it was just what I was meant for in life. It was just who I was meant to be. A whore. That's all I thought I was worth, was what a man would pay for me. So I stayed in the sex industry for 19 years. The last 10 years, I hated it so much that I would go into a depression for almost two days every time I had to turn a trick. And I had to charge so much money from the men in order to survive on as little, doing as little of it as possible because I despised it that much. I didn't want to be a whore. I just wanted to be a person and live a life I wanted a real life. So after 19 years, working every facet, escort ads, pornography websites, es you know, hooking on the streets, hooking in the bars, bartending, even bartending, I had deals made where I could get take off as long as the house got a cut, I could take off and go turn tricks while I was bartending. So even as a bartender, I was a sex worker. Walking away was the best decision I ever made. I walked away almost 14 years ago. And I can honestly say that it was the best decision I ever made, girls. For any of you out there who may watch this, who feel the way that I felt, that this is what you were meant to be, and you're stuck in that life, you're meant to be so much more. Don't believe that you're only worth what a man will pay for you. Don't believe that you should have to sell yourself to be yourself. So I've introduced myself to you. You know a little bit about me. For the past almost 14 years, I have lived a very happy, normal life in Orange County, California. Um, I'm going home to visit in New Orleans in the spring. I'm, look, I'm really looking forward to seeing family and friends. I'm really looking forward to continuing this blog. I want, I want to reach out to the entire LGBTQIA community. And A, for those of you who don't know who are watching, means ally. So in other words, if you think that, that we're human beings and that we're who we say we are, you're an ally. So you're A on the moniker, <laughs> just to be clear. 
um, yeah, it's not always got to be, it's not always got to be really hard, deep topics. We can have fun topics. We can have deep topics. Any of you girls who are new to transition, I began transition, you know, 32 years ago. So if you have questions, ask me. There's nothing that I don't know and there's nothing that I haven't seen a million times when it comes to the world of being a transsexual or a transgender woman or whichever label you choose. So reach out to me. I'm here. I'm listening. And I want to be here for all of you. So, and I want us to be here for each other. And I want to leave you with one thought. In this world, this is for my sisters and brothers, my fellow trans sisters and brothers who are listening. In this world, there are two types of people. Two. There are lions and there are gazelles. If you're a gazelle, it doesn't usually end well for you. So always be a proud lioness or a proud lion. Roar. Let your strength be seen and known. Don't cower down. Don't kowtow. Don't deny yourself. Don't hold back. Don't wait a day longer. There is never a perfect time to transition. There is never going to be a perfect time to jump in and commit. If you're waiting for that day, it doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. So do it. Go for it. You owe it to yourself. Be happy. Love yourself. Be strong enough to love yourself. Be strong enough to love yourself through their hate of you. They being, well, we all know who hates us. Let's not be, you know. <laughs> I think it would be rather ludicrous to start listing off who hates us, don't you? So, I'm going to say goodnight. I hope that all of you enjoyed this first episode of Southern Liberal Trans Woman Speaks with your hostess of the mostess, Jamie Gendron. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback. Let me know what you think. Please subscribe to my page. I'm going to get better at this. This is my very first attempt at this. And I've really enjoyed doing it. I think that it's time. And it's good for me to reach out to all of you. See, I live basically pretty stealth for the last almost 14 years. And it's time to come out of the shadows because there's a lot of hateful people waging war against us. And me hiding in the shadows because I can, that's not right. That's not being there for my sisters. I have to have my skin in the game. So my pledge to my sisters and my brothers and all of my LGBTQIA family is I love you, be strong, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye now. Y'all take care.